Joining us now is Katie Club Busick. Is that correct, Katie? Nice job. Nice. nice. Job. I know it's terrible. It's uh, it's why I blog under Katie Speak. I'm not trying to be anonymous. There's just no way I expect anyone to spell or pronounce that thing. Okay. So you, Katie, is a writer, a reproductive justice activist. And um, I wanted to just have you on briefly to just tell it basically the laws in Texas that kind of came to national attention, the really intense anti-woman's health, anti-choice push that was kind of brought to the national consciousness by Wendy Davis are still being pushed forward uh, in Texas. They're uh, currently in in kind of legal uh in a legal process right now. And uh, I want you to both speak briefly to that. And then also you're involved in organizing an online telethon event, which supports Texas women. Essentially you're fundraising to help keep uh, what few Planned Parenthood, uh, Planned Parenthood and other women health centers that are operating in Texas uh, open and providing services while this goes through uh, its legal process. Sure. Um, just a just a quick correction, just for people who are listening. Um, we're actually the the organization is the, the fundraiser is sponsored by Neural Pro Choice America and um, and NIAF, New York Abortion Access Fund. So it's not directly associated with Planned Parenthood, um, though that's they're definitely involved in the the legal battle that's going on in Texas. So. Wendy Davis' filibuster was just the first special session that Rick Perry called. Um, he is so anti-choice, he called additional legislative sessions and managed to cram through um, HB2, which is one of those sort of omnibus trap laws. You guys talk about it a lot on the show um, when, when those bills get pushed. They're just designed to close down clinics. Um, they, don't, they don't have anything to do with the safety and health of women. They're just pushed by an anti-choice agenda um, to, to don't really respect my bodily autonomy, which is why I take it personally, even when it's not happening in my state. So uh, at the end of October, an admitting privileges requirement was struck down by the Fifth Circuit Court. And then on Halloween, the really awfully horrible uh, Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott had sued for a stay in that decision, and he got it. So immediately effective was the admitting privileges uh, provision. And so just clinics shut down across the state o- overnight. Um, the people who work for our home spent all night calling their patients who had appointments in the morning to tell them not to come. And so what's happened now is 246 out of the 254 counties in Texas have no abortion provider. There are only six counties in the entire state that have someone that can provide this legal medical procedure. So women are driving like 600 miles for, for appointments if they can even get there. It's, it's really ridiculous. Yeah, that's absolutely ludicrous. I mean, and that, that's really why I wanted to just have you on, even just you know, uh, relatively briefly, to just kind of highlight what's happening there, this kind of emergency uh, that's taking yeah. place right now in Texas. Uh, so briefly, what is the state of uh, where, where is the case at legally right now? What's the next process it's going to go through? And then explain this uh, fundraiser and how uh, people could, uh, could get involved with it. Sure. So the law was passed, and then uh, pro-choice groups stood for a stay. Then the stay was lifted, causing the current crisis. And then the Center for Reproductive Rights and, and other sort of like legal legal action groups have have gone to the Supreme Court and asked for an emergency appeal to lift to lift the lifting of the stay, if that's not confusing enough for everybody. Um, the problem is that that goes to Antonin Scalia because he's the one in charge of the Fifth Circuit Court. So oh. it's essentially his decision unilaterally. I mean, he can bring in the other guys in the black robes, but he probably won't. So it's sort of up to him whether or not this, this law gets struck back down. And what happens if he decides to maintain the current state of affairs is that gives the Fifth Circuit sort of seal of approval on the admitting privileges law. And places like Wisconsin and Alabama have already struck it down. So you have one circuit court saying yes and one circuit court saying no, and that's the kind of thing that sends it to the Supreme Court, which is the whole point of the, of the anti-choice movement, is to overturn Roe. So if you're in a safe blue state and you think that what's happening in Texas right now is not about you, you better believe this has everything to do with you, this, this state of emergency and the whole thing. Um, so it's sort of last minute because because Texas is the state in crisis. I mean, there are other states, uh, Ohio and Indiana, places that are, are a nightmare for women's rights as well. 
but, but Texas, because of the size and the population, is just really an immediate crisis. So uh, the amazing pro-choice activist and comedian author Liz Winstead um, got together with Sarah Silverman and they are hosting an online telethon on Monday, November 18th from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern with an unbelievable lineup. Um, we're going to have uh, Texas activists on stage. You guys had Sarah Slayman on. She was the... She, she was the, the woman that tried to testify before the Texas legislature. The troopers dragged her out. We've got, Boy, we've got uh, comedians and, and writers and, and poets and pundits. It's going to be amazing. Great. So, and, and just really, uh, there's, there's a link uh, to your site. We're going to also put up a link uh, to the telethon and the event. This is really, really important. I just wanted to have you on to kind of highlight this because I think obviously, uh, certainly people are familiar with the crisis in these states. I don't necessarily know that everybody's familiar with the fact that there is really, a, I would, you know, a sort of state of emergency for women's health in Texas right now. Uh, Katie Klubusik, writer, Reproductive justice activist, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us about this. 